Hi, welcome to the Halstead Jewelry Minute, where today we're in the photo studio and we'll be talking about tripods. In this series of the Halstead Jewelry Minute, we'll be covering tips and techniques for your home photo studio. Quality photos are absolutely critical in today's competitive jewelry market. They add a sense of perceived value to your work if your images are done well. Here at Halstead, we take hundreds of new product photos every year, and we're going to share some tricks of the trade with you today. Most of what we share will relate to DSLR cameras, which are digital single lens reflex cameras, which are kind of the standard for photo studio setups. We'll get into the cameras more specifically later, but today we're going to focus on tripods. So why do you even need a tripod in your studio? A tripod is absolutely essential for keeping your camera steady during photographic work. It will help your images to be crisp, clean, and clear. And it's absolutely critical if you'll be using the manual settings on your camera. Two of the best known brands for tripods are Vanguard and Manfrotto, and those are the brands we use for tripods in our own studio here at Halstead. Now there are a lot of options when it comes to tripods. The features can get very complicated and overwhelming, but for photographing jewelry in a home studio setting, you can keep it very simple, so don't get overwhelmed by all the choices out there. We'll go over some specific features when we start reviewing tripods here in a moment. Two great places to buy your tripods are B&H Photo and Amazon.com. Both have extensive reviews and information online, and they have great return policies if you find you aren't satisfied with the piece you choose. A tabletop tripod is a great option when you're starting out with a home photo studio. These are the least expensive types of tripods, and they'll run anywhere between $10 and $100. This particular model cost us about $25, and we use it all the time. So most of your tripods will have a universal screw attachment at the top where you can anchor your DSLR camera or even some point and shoot models. So some advantages of this type of tripod are that they're inexpensive, they're small and easy to maneuver, and you can get them right on the tabletop next to your jewelry and your lighting setup. Okay, some things you want to watch for are that the maximum height on this tripod is a little bit limited. You do have some options to extend the legs and the stem here sometimes, but even so, it may not be enough to look straight down on your jewelry unless you use some workarounds like using a stack of books or another object to raise the tripod. Okay, something else you want to think about is the minimum focal distance of your lens. That's something you'll have to look at with your specific lens model to see if you have the proper distance between the subject and the camera lens itself. Okay, another feature you'll want to look for on this type of tripod is to see if it has pan, which is the pivoting feature, and tilt, which allows you to point up and down with the camera. That can be a really valuable feature with a tripod and it's probably something you want to make sure you get. One thing to be very careful of with your tabletop model is the combined weight of your camera and your lens. This setup can get top heavy and depending what you're doing and how you use the tilt feature, you can actually tip the whole setup over and crash down on your lens and your subject. So just keep that in mind and be very careful when you're using a tabletop model. This is a full length tripod and this is a little bit more of an expensive piece of equipment. These tripods will range between $35 and $400 a piece. Now that's a big range because you're going to see a huge range in the features available in the full length tripod. One place you can save money is by electing a non-aluminum alloy material for your tripod. You'll find a lot of tripods out there made out of carbon fiber or aluminum alloys um, that are quite a bit more expensive. Those are used by travel photographers and outdoor photographers, so if you're just going to keep this in your indoor studio, you'll be fine with a non-aluminum alloy. Now, like I mentioned, these have a wider range of features, and we actually tried three different tripods before we settled on this model that we really like. Some of the challenges with the full-length tripod are, again, shooting pointing down at your subject matter. If you don't have um, a pivot head or certain features, you're, you're going to have to tilt your tripod or work around that if you want a shot that's straight down on top of your subject. But there are a lot of benefits with these full-length tripods. The maximum height is a great feature of these and it's something you'll want to think about when you're making a decision. The legs and the center pole both telescope on a full-length tripod, so you have a big range in the height you can achieve. 
These tripods also handle heavier weight cameras and lenses, so you don't have to worry about them tipping over. They're generally a lot more stable. And again, you'll have a big range in the angles and the distance you can use in your photography. So the reason we chose this particular model is because of one special feature it offers. And I want to show you just in case it's something you would find useful. The center pole extends all the way up. And then I can depress a button underneath the center pole to get this whole pole to lean over. So if my camera was mounted on the top, I could then achieve that straight down angle on the subject matter. That's really useful for us in the studio and we use that quite regularly. Now we've added a ball head attachment to this full length tripod. Some tripods will come with a ball head included and others won't. So this is an attachment you'll definitely want to purchase if it's not standard with your tripod. The ball head segment right here um, will cost between $10 and $100. And this is one place where it is really worth spending a little extra money. If you get a cheap ball head, it won't be able to support the weight of your camera reliably and you'll find that it starts to sag and tip over while you're shooting. So you want a good quality ball head that you can securely tighten and use reliably. Okay, your ball head is going to attach to your center pole with a universal screw mechanism and it will also have an attachment point at the top to screw in your DSLR or your point and shoot camera. Now the ball head is just like it sounds, it has a ball mechanism here that gives you full flexibility with pan and tilt features. So we can twist the top of the tripod and we can also use this ball mechanism to get a full complete range in tilt options. Thanks for joining us and be sure to check out the video blog for more episodes on Photo Studio Tips.